ending abruptly. End the song abruptly. No fades, no nothing. We don't care. That's not what we're here for. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to what will probably only be a very short stream of The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Um, I don't know, I had time. Felt like it. Might as well play it for a couple of hours. I, I have nothing but Great Ace Attorney on the brain, and I want to... I want to get further in it, into it. So, here we are now. Last time around, we started up our second trial of game number two. We discovered that uh, Soseki was involved in two cases. In that uh, awful, awful hell that is London. And, uh, yeah. Details. Who needs details? Let's just jump right in. The game will do its part to explain exactly what's going on, I'm sure. 22nd of February, 9.23am, the Old Bailey Defendant's Antechamber. There's no numbers on this one. Gotta remember that one. The Old Bailey. This place always makes me feel strange. I seem to get chills down my spine and break out into a nervous sweat all the time. Well, I didn't think I'd be back here so soon. That's my line! Good morning! Ah, uh, good morning, Mr. Natsume. It was only two days ago that I was declared not guilty here. Yes, we somehow managed to prove he didn't stab Miss Green in the back. But now this! Another morning, another murder, and here I am again in this hellhole! You can't keep coming to court! I'm beginning to think he's right. It really does seem as though he's cursed. Mr. Naruhodo, I'm afraid I have bad news. Oh. Mr. Natsume, good morning. Yes, morning. So, here we are again. Yes, again. Judicial Assistant Miss Mikotoba Esquiris, what's the bad news? Oh dear, you heard, did you? If you come in shouting at the top of your voice, people can't help hearing what you say! Oh, I am sorry. You've done nothing wrong, Miss Suzato. Now, what is it? Welcome, Sora. How, how's it, how's your shaking? How's it hanging? How's it, uh, percolating? Well, it seems that the prosecution in today's trial will be led by Lord Beric Von Zeeks. Van Zeeks? Gah! Oh no! Oh no, no! The so-called Reaper of the Bailey. The most legendary prosecutor in the land. In the trial two days ago, he pursued Soseki-san and I relentlessly. Of course, by the skin of our teeth. We managed to pull through, but still. Perhaps Mr. Natsume's acquittal in the last trial wasn't the end of the matter, after all. Yes, I know what you're thinking. The legend of the Reaper that says, Nothing can save a person in the dock when Lord Van Zeeks is the prosecutor. Oh, no! That even if the person is found not guilty, the accused will meet a mysterious end, one way or another. And we've experienced it firsthand. A man we successfully defended met the most terrifying end after his acquittal, right here in the Old Bailey. Ah! Do I have to put up with those ice-cold eyes boring into my soul again? Cursed by evil spirits and now by the Reaper! Pair of petrifying perils, potentially! Well, if it's potentially, at least you appear to have hope, Mr. Natsume. Locum student, Mr. Naruhodo Esquire! Uh, yes? I'm... I'm innocent! You have to believe me! You... more than anyone now! Don't worry. I'll be your steadfast ally every step of the way in this battle. I promise. And this promises to be a hard battle, I fear. 
Well? The trial is scheduled to begin shortly. We should move into the courtroom. Let's go. Oh yes, I forgot to say. I'm afraid he won't be able to make it. Mr. Sholmes, I mean. That's probably for the best. Oh! If he were here, I might be tempted to rely on his help. And that could be seen as a weakness. If Lord Van Zeeks were to notice, he'd prey on it mercilessly. At least, that's my gut feeling. Mr. Naruhodo? You're right! Yes, you're so right! Oh, well said, M locum student, Mr. Naruhodo Esquire! Well said! I swear on the sword at my side, and on the spirit of Cosma that it harbors. I'll show him what a Japanese lawyer can do. I'll set you free with honor. Oh, yes. The blade's name is Karma, though. Shh, don't worry about it. 22nd February, 9.40 a.m. The Old Bailey Courtroom. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. I now call upon the counsels for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. The prosecution is ready. The defense is ready, my lord. Readiness for the trial, my learned Nipponese friend, is not what the defense needs. What you need is readiness for your inevitable defeat. It's not just in my imagination, it's really there. Lord Van Zeeks has such an animosity towards us Japanese for some reason. It was some time ago now that the, he first became known as the Reaper of the Bailey, I believe. These past few years, he hasn't appeared in court at all. Yet now he's back in the courtroom. Though for some reason, only when I'm defending. This Reaper, with his curious disdain for us Japanese, is a prosecutor shrouded in mystery. Still, this isn't the time to be pondering that. I have to concentrate on Soseki-san's trial. Furthermore, I now call upon the six ladies and gentlemen of the jury. You have been chosen at random to represent the will of the people in this trial. Are you ready to fulfill your duty? Absolutely! I had a feeling this larrikin wasn't innocent before. I must say that I feel especially ruthless on days when my hat refuses to sit right. Oh, well, I rather like how you're wearing your hat. I think the ruthless look is very fetching, actually. I need to be somewhere at 10 o'clock. I have a very important meeting. Let's make this quick. I couldn't agree more. I need to take home five bobs and I the missiles will go through the roof. Oh, may the Lord show us all the light here and lead his flock to a righteous verdict. The British jury system is so very different to our own, isn't it? It's quite extraordinary to think that the power of judgment is in the hands of six members of the public. And that the judge can only pass sentence when all jurors are in agreement about the defendant's guilt. Six citizens of London, chosen at random. Or at least, that's the idea. It appears five of them are exactly the same as the last trial we had with Soseki-san. <laughs> the prosecution would draw attention to the fact that the accused was on trial here but two days ago. Accordingly, where possible, the same jurors have been asked to return for duty today. Okay, that makes sense. Very well. Let us commence the trial. Lord Van Zeeks, your opening statement, please. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it is not the intent of the prosecution to cast doubt over your past decision. However, the innocent verdict afforded to this eccentric Nipponese before has had dire consequences. Did the accused repent for his wrongdoing in that affair? <laughs> Far from it. Instead, he used his freedom to perpetrate a most blood-curdling crime. Namely, that of the attempted murder of his neighboring lodger, an innocent Englishman. To 
to explain the circumstances of the crime, the prosecution calls its first witness to the stand. The detective responsible for investigating the scene, and the accused himself. <laughs> Witnesses, your names and occupations, please. Yes, sir. Tobias Gregson, Detective Inspector at Scotland Yard's Homicide Division. Ah, uh, so Segi Natsume from the Empire of Japan. Uh, my government ordered me to come here as a student to study your language and culture. Mr. Natsume. Yes, my lord, uh, sir. I'm quite sure I'm not mistaken, but you swore an oath never to set foot in my courtroom again. I remember it if it were yesterday. The day before, in fact, my lord, but close enough. Uh, believe me, this is the last place I want to be. Inspector, let's hear from you first. Explain the case for the court. Right you are, sir. The incident occurred at the Garadeb household where the defendant has lodgings. In the ground floor room of the victim, Mr. William Shamspear. The defendant has already admitted to visiting the victim on the night in question. Mr. Shamspear collapsed in his room as a result of poisoning by Strychenin. Strychenin? I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Let's find out. Sorry, everyone. I'm sure that the actual poison is important, and I don't know how to pronounce it, so... Tell me. Tell me how to pronounce this. Strike nine. Strike nine. Gotcha. Okay. Poisoned by Strike nine. It was found the following morning when the landlord, suspecting something was wrong, broke down the door. This means, I presume, that the door to the victim's room was locked at the time of the incident. Correct, my lord. It was locked from the inside making entry to or exit from the room impossible. Although the victim, Mr. Shamspear, lives to tell tale, he very nearly didn't. The man was halfway to heaven when we first found him. Hmm. I was the first officer on the scene, my lord. And I have a photographic print here that I took at the time to show how it looked. Yes, a chilling scene indeed. The man looks very much deceased. That's right. Everyone present believed that's exactly what he was. Very well. I shall accept this photographic print as evidence for the court. Now then, Mr. Natsume. Uh, uh yes? Y yes! Ask the defendant, do you have anything to say at this juncture? They're... they're haunted! Haunted by evil sp spirits! G good gracious, what's haunted? My lodgings! There's been a whole series of strange happenings in my lodgings! The tent before me died in mysterious circumstances. A woman was stabbed by no one on the street outside. My neighbor was poisoned. And me! What about me? I've nearly been killed countless times. Killed, Mr. Natsume? How? Even on that fateful night it happened, when I returned from Mr. Shamspear's room, I lit my gas stove and climbed into bed, but before long, the stove went out, and somebody tried to kill me! You must always extinguish all fires before retiring for the night, Mr. Natsume. But it's so cold! My runny nose would freeze! The point is, I... I didn't poison my neighbor. Oh, why am I being accused of this? Why is my existence so cursed? Thank you, witnesses. I believe I have a reasonably clear picture of events. If I could raise one more point, my lord. One more conclusive point. 
Conclusive? Go on. Fortunately, the victim, Mr. Shamspear, has regained consciousness after his ordeal. And he is named the true culprit. The poison consumed by the victim was administered in a cup of tea that he drank on the night in question. Tea, my lord, that was brought to the victim's room by the accused. D the accused? Good grief! Order! Order! Yes, that's the crux of this whole case. If Soseki-san is innocent, then why? Why has the victim accused him? Well, Mr. Natsume, what have you say to this accusation? That evening, yes, I did take some freshly brewed tea with me when I visited Mr. Shamsby's room as a gift. The public water pump outside always freezes at night, so I bought bottled water especially to make it. And this is the result! Never will I touch tea again, never! The public pump was frozen, you say? That's not information we've heard before. That will do, thank you. Now, according to our laws, the defense must have the opportunity to cross-examine witnesses at least once. Therefore, I call upon these witnesses now for a formal testimony. I presume the prosecution has no objection. None whatsoever, my lord. Good. Then you will give your account of events on the night in question to the court now. Yes, my lord. Catastrophic night. It was around 9 o'clock that evening when I visited my neighbor and took some tea with me as a gift. We had a heated literary debate over a nice hot drink, after which I went back to my room at around 11. Ah! Oh, my tea was completely harmless! He couldn't have locked the door behind me otherwise, could he? Strike 9 takes some time to have an effect on the body. People don't keel over immediately after taking it. The victim would have been perfectly able to lock the door after his guest left. The argument still stands. Hmm, yes, I see. It all seems relatively straightforward. Excuse me, but that testimony does raise one rather crucial point, I think. Mr. Natsume claims his tea to have been harmless. Presumably, though, the teacups have been examined for traces of the poison, haven't they? Why didn't I think of that? Well, as it happens, no. We haven't been able to. Did I hear you correctly, Inspector? Scotland Yard has failed to examine the suspect's substance. How could you have overlooked something so important? Isn't that the first thing you should have done? My learned Nippany's friend is falsely incensed. The Inspector said Scotland Yard was unable to examine the tea. Not that it was overlooked. Unable? Why? It's simple enough. There's none left. Not a drop. Someone must have been very thirsty indeed. With current scientific techniques, it's not possible to test for poison under such circumstances. We only need a drop, but that one drop actually has to exist, funnily enough. Hmm. The lack of examination notwithstanding, it appears nothing other than the tea passed the victim's lips on the night in question. I see. Thank you. The matter is clear. Cast your eyes over the jury, my learned friend. What? You can see it in their faces, I'm sure. The recognition of the accused's guilt. Your client's fate is all but sealed. In mere moments from now, you will lose, and your compatriot will be damned for all eternity. He's right. I can feel all six of the jurors looking daggers at me. But I can't let them beat me down. I won't. Counsel for the defense, proceed with your cross-examination. Yes, my lord. All right, let's learn some facts. Hold it! 
Were you and your neighbor good friends then? Oh, actually, before I do that, I want to actually check off some of the new stuff we got. Oh, we just got the photograph as, as evidence. Okay, so... Gas, stove, nothing... nothing too, too out of the ordinary here. The soap, of course. The man foaming at the mouth, yada yada yada. Were you and your neighbor good friends then? Ah, no! We weren't friends! Not at all! Not at all! Never! Ever! A simple no would have sufficed. Then, um, why did you decide to pay him a visit? Mr. Shamspear fancies himself as having great literary knowledge. As a fellow scholar of English literature, we find much to talk about together. Come now, no Nipponese could understand the finer points of English literature. And on the night in question, that was the topic for conversation as well, I presume. It was the day of my last trial when I was acquitted. I had just arrived back at my lodgings, when I ran into Mr. Shamspear outside on the street. That was at around 6 o'clock. We exchanged one or two pleasantries, but it soon turned into a heated discussion. He was on his way out at the time, though. So I promised to visit his room that evening at 9 to continue our debate. But did I have ill intentions? No! Not one, not two, not any! None at all! Never, ever! A simple no would have sufficed, I feel. Then tell the court what did happen when you visited the victim's room. literary debate about Shakespeare's works, I think you said, didn't you? Shakespeare? Ah, a very worthy topic of conversation, I must say. Oh yes, my lord. Romeo and Juliet, who was stronger? It was a profoundly pleasurable parlay. R Romeo and Juliet? Who was stronger? I know I'm going to regret asking this, but how did the debate go? Well, we both agreed that we would reach a conclusion more quickly with a reenactment. So we battled it out, in a Greco-Roman style, naturally. What? Mr. Shamspear had all sorts of costumes in his room for just such a contest. So when you say a reenactment, you mean you were actually in costume? He is Romeo, I is Juliet, and after a vigorous wild tussle, I as Juliet came out on top. A victory I'll cherish forever! I dare not imagine the terrible scene of carnage. The fact remains that it was you who prepared the tea and took it to the victim. Correct? I boiled the water in my room and made a pot to take with me. I heard that he was too poor to have tea himself, you see. It's true. There was no sign of any tea leaves in the man's room. I wanted to do something nice, to be friendly. So why is everyone looking at me with such suspicion? My tea was harmless, of course it was. And do you have any basis for that statement, witness? My tea was completely harmless, he couldn't have locked the door behind me otherwise, could he? Hold it! Yes, there's not a drop of tea left in the victim's room anywhere, was there? That's correct. Anyone would think the fellow had never had a pot of tea before. He must have licked it dry. Which is a pity, because one drop is all we would have needed to analyze it for poison. And you say that you returned home to your room at 11 o'clock, Mr. Knotsman. Yes, definitely. By heaven and earth, I swear it. Landlord was able to verify that, as it happens. He confirmed that the defendant went back to his room at 11 that night. And how was the landlord able to attest to this? He, um, said it was the lamps, I believe. Th the lamps, Inspector! When tenants return to their rooms and start using gas, the lamps in other parts of the house flicker. Yes, Mr. Garadeb seems to pay a lot of attention to the comings and goings of his tenants. There's only one key to Mr. Shamspear's room! I know that for certain! 
so he must have locked the door himself from inside his room. The victim has confirmed that to be the case, yes. So I'm right, my tea was harmless, completely harmless. If you take poison, you die. Everyone knows that. It's not that simple, I'm afraid. Uh, wh what do you mean? Strike 9 takes some time to have an effect on the body. People don't keel over immediately after taking it. Hold it! How long does it take for symptoms to appear then? According to the coroner I was speaking to at the yard, about 30 minutes after the poison's consumed. Then the victim suffers violent convulsions, cramping, and stiffness, and eventually dies from asphyxiation. So there's a 30 minute interval between when the poison is ingested and the onset of symptoms. Seems to be a lot of different types of poison in the world, that's for sure. Oh dear. Death by poisoning again. It's always so awful. 30 minutes is a long time. Certainly long enough for the victim to have locked the door behind the accused after he left. You can't deny that. And it further degrades Soseki-san's alibi. I have the medical report from the doctor who examined the victim here, my lord. It spells it out, really. The accused is the only person who could have done it. Very well. The court will add this report to the court record as evidence. Oh yes, I see it here. Delayed onset of symptoms. Grace. The victim would have been perfectly able to lock the door after his guest left. The argument still stands. The argument still stands, you say? This is what Mr. Natsume has been saying, isn't it? The pair of them drank tea together that night, so if there's poison in it, the victim wouldn't have been able to lock the door after the accused left later on. Exactly! Ah, oh, me and my tea are innocent! Sweet and innocent, I tell you! I'm afraid, sir, that doesn't follow. You see, Strike 9 is a slow-acting poison. In other words, it takes time for symptoms to appear. So, you could have left the room up to 30 minutes after the victim drank the tea. And, as long as you did that, Mr. Shamspear could have locked the door after you'd gone. But, but no! We drank the tea straight away! The battle over Romeo or Juliet was stronger! That came after the tea! Do you have any evidence to support that statement? In my great homeland, the Empire of Japan, we have a saying. Drink tea while it's hot! Sure, a proverb will satisfy the prosecution. I'm afraid there's no conclusive proof to support the defendant's assertion. On the contrary, there are sufficient grounds to infer his guilt in this matter. N n no That's the extent of their testimony, is it? Let's uh check our check out our medical report while we can. William Shamspear, 31. Ingestion of a small quantity of strike nine. Toxic vets present 30 minutes after ingestion. High likelihood of the substance having been mixed with the tea the victim was drinking, but no sample could be obtained for testing. Investigative conclusions. The poisoning incident occurred at around 1.30 a.m. on the 21st of February, assessed from the victim's pocket watch. that appears to have broken when the man collapsed after the delayed onset of symptoms. No container for the poison was found at the scene. If I could voice a personal opinion, Mr. Naruhodo? Uh, of course, go ahead. Mr. Natsume is arguing for his innocence so adamantly and so persistently, yet Inspector Gregson just brushes what he says aside. It's really quite infuriating. I agree. So, we need to find an inconsistency in what the inspector is saying, I think. I'm afraid so. As things stand, the jurors are sure to find Mr. Natsume guilty. As I see it, what we need to focus on is on the poison and the tea. Let's listen carefully to this testimony again. Yes. Alright. So... Before we get uh, started, we need to save. Okay, so 
something doesn't make sense here. So Zeki left for his room around 11, and this thing says 1.30. So, he must have been poisoned in the two and a half hours. So, let's present this. Objection! Mr. Natsume? You say it was 11 p.m. when you left to return your, to your room, correct? Yes! And Inspector Gregson, can we rely on the information in the medical report unconditionally? Of course we can. There's no problem with that report, Sunshine. Actually, I think there's a very big problem. Because there's a chronological inconsistency between it and the defendant's testimony. A chrono- what? What are you on about? According to this report, the victim must have consumed the poison at around 1.30 in the morning. And yet, the defendant, Mr. Natsume, left the victim's room at 11. Uh. Yes, that's right. There's more than two hours of missing time there. Mm. In other words, if there was poison in the tea that Mr. Natsume brought to the victim's room, how could the victim have fallen ill to it two and a half full hours after the defendant left? Whoa! Wow, they, they did the same. Synchronized, synchronized flailing. The defense's argument is entirely reasonable. How do you respond, Lord Van Zeeks? Time to pour myself another one. Pray, forgive the discourtesy if my mind has wandered. I was considering what cuisine would best complement the contents of my hallowed chalice this luncheon. How could it have happened, you ask? Bro, I do hate to shatter illusions, but my Nipponese friend appears to be chasing a phantom idea. Phantom? Is it so hard to imagine that the victim drank his tea after the accused had left? For example, at the time stated in the medical report. Yes, at around half past one. Objection! Mr. Natsume brought the tea with him to drink together with his neighbor. And in Japan, there's a well-known saying. Drink tea while it's hot! Objection! And in my country, there's an even more apt saying. There is nothing more refreshing than cold tea. The, the, the point is, if there was such a long gap, there may be other ways to explain how the victim came to be poisoned. Other possibilities. What sort of possibilities, counsel? Fuck. <laughs> well, for example, the man could have had another visitor. Another visitor? That's a very bold assertion, my learned friend. From someone who has nothing to substantiate it. Or, or the victim could have taken the poison of his own volition. You suggest this might have been a suicide counsel. Objection! Mr. Shamspear has categorically denied suicide. The idea can and must be discounted. Objection! But... But he could be lying. <laughs> he is not, please. Is, is something wrong, Lord Van Zeeks? I was listening to the sound of the carriage pulling up outside the courtroom. Pray, forgive the discourtesy. C carriage? What carriage? It would seem... That the key player in this case has just arrived. Out! Out, brief candle! Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Who 
sir, are you? William Shamspear, my lord. Alas, twas I, undone by these bitter events. I am the victim. What? What's he doing here? The prosecution seeks to call this gentleman to the stand. With his testimony, my learned friend's futile resistance will be utterly crushed. You're calling him as a witness? Very well, counsel. I grant your request with interest. I'm curious to discover what the court shall hear from the victim himself. Happy am I, Shamspear, to regale thee with my tale of woe, my lord. But, but, I still have my own tale to tell. My own tale of worse woe. I can regale the court with the tale of my perfect innocence. In perfect English. That will do, Mr. Natsume. Let the court now hear from the victim. <laughs> oh, God. All right, so that's Mr. Shamspear, but who's that other man beside him? Yes, I think, I feel sure we've caught a glimpse of that man before. State your names and occupations for the court, please, witnesses. A writer of words so sweet they do scent the breeze, an inventor of ideas so profound they compose the earth. The unrivaled poet, the unmatched scribe, William Shakespeare. With a great bar to be recalled to life anew, lo, what a magnificent man. Good fellows, I am he who ponders such a miracle, William Shamspear. Oh, um, name's Meter Man, Adrian B. Meter Man. I work for the Altamont Gas Company, East End Branch Office. Oh, I remember now. It was yesterday on Briar Road. Oh yes, she's right. It's him. Oh, what's this? What's that man doing over there? He looks like he's trying to see into Soseki-san's logics. Is something wrong, Mr. Naruhoda? Um, excuse me, could we have a word? Ah! Dude just moonwalked away from us. Yes, we spotted him outside Mr. Gerdev's house that morning. And he's a gas company employee? What does he have to do with this case? So, Mr. William Shamspear, you are the victim in this miserable affair, correct? Oh heaven, oh hell, do you command me to remember that sweet poison that didst cross me and cross mine innocent lips? I subpoenaed him for the trial with his doctor's permission, naturally. Hearing the testimony of the aggrieved will remove any room for doubt for the jurors' minds, I'm sure. Behold, you only have to rearrange the letters of my name to see that Misa Seraph, an angel indeed. Thus be I of noble mind, sweet of nature, and verily honest of heart, as all heavenly angels be because there isn't a less contrived meaning in your name. No, not at all. The jurors seem to be very moved by this man, I'm afraid. They're actually taking the Seraph anagram idea seriously? Thank you, witness, for your illuminating introductions. But my lord, what's the man next to Mr. Shamspear doing here? The gas man, I mean. Uh, what? Me? What? Well now. Allow me to enlighten my learned friend. You recall, I presume, your earlier impertinence? When you suggested that the victim had another visitor to his room on the night in question. And moreover, that the victim is a compulsive liar. What? N no, no, I didn't quite say that. This young chin stroker here is here to controvert your wild claims. Conclusively. Is that not so, Mr. Meter Man? Eh, uh, hang on, no, I'm, I'm just here. 
I hereby call for your formal testimonies. You will tell the court as lucidly as possible what happened on the night in question. One may smile and smile and be a villain. Yes, it doth pain me, but let the truth be spoken. The truth of that wintry night of my discontent. Hmm. It's been a long time since I've acted, so don't 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 expect me to pull off Shakespeare. <laughs> uh salutations, Reen UEF. Welcome to the stream. The wintry night of my discontent. The snow lay about, my neighbor did cometh in the evening, bearing a gift of tea. But Mary, bitter was his drink, and when he left I did fall prostrate on my table. Twas the tea alone did pass my lips that late hour, not else. I was outside this bloke's window in the freezing cold all night, keeping an eye on his room. No one else visited his room but that short little round-backed eastern fella. I've been well. How about you? <laughs> Wait, what did you say? You were keeping an eye on Mr. Shamsphere's room all night? That's right. Of course, bloke's window is all but blocked up, isn't it? But there's a little gap in the bricks where you can see into the room. So I spent the night trying to keep my teeth from chattering as I peered in through that. The question is, sir, why? Ah, well, now, that's because he's on my list. What a piece of work is a man. Wherefore wouldst thou not stare in wonderment? What are you talking about? This buzzing busybody hath not part in this play. I pray thee, pay him no heed. Make no more ado about his tedious words. What'd you say about me? Calm yourself. This court is concerned with what happened on the night in question. Nothing more. Indeed, that is so. And, as the testimony we have just heard clearly reveals, there was no one other than the accused present at the time who could have carried out this crime. <laughs> Got hype when you learned about the new voice cast, Kuro? That makes sense. I'm, I'm pretty hyped for Kuro no Kiseki myself. I can't wait to play it. I mean, I have to wait for the spreadsheet, but... I still can't wait. I'm so excited. Well, I believe this may be the final testimony of the trial. Now, counsel, the defense may proceed with the cross-examination. Yes, my lord. Alright, let's go press some statements, shall we? Hold it! To be clear, by neighbor, you're referring to the defendant, Mr. Natsume. Oh, indeed, sire. Perhaps that, perchance thou wouldst call that I call him the man from upstairs. And at what time did the mustached Nipponese visit you in your room? Our meeting was promised for the hour of nine, and lo, did he come to tender a gift of fragrant tea. Details were which in accordance of the defendant's own testimony, yes. And we were broiled in such a literary debate as history hath not seen before. By which I presume he means their discussion about who was the stronger, Romeo or Juliet. I, Shamspear, did play the part of young Romeo, whilst my neighbor played the fair Juliet. Each of us dressed as our would our characters be, to bring weight upon our merry experiment. I dare not imagine the scene. Frailty, thy name is woman. Canst thou imagine how dismayed I was? Yes, I had heard of the Eastern art of jujitsu, but... Ne'er did I dream to be a skill practiced by the comely maiden. Juliet beat Romeo up? This is not helping our case. I believe the court has heard enough about your earth-shattering literary debate. Perhaps you could reiterate your statement about the tea that the accused brought to your room. My liege, I am thy servant. Gladly, I would do thy bidding. <laughs> I mean, hey, his his taser sword's 
totally a real sword. <laughs> I, I don't know what to make of Vaughn, honestly. <laughs> but Mary, bitter was his drink, and when he left, I did fall prostrate on my table. Hold it! Let me stop you there. Mr. Natsume left your room at 11 o'clock, but it wasn't until after 2 that the poison made you collapse. That amounts to more than three hours of missing time. If the defendant had really put the poison into your tea, that three hour window of time is something you're gonna have to explain. Gladly, tis an easy task. What? I did drink of the tea not while my guest did tarry, but after he took leave of me. Faith, twas stone cold, but... At one hour post midnight, verily were my lips parched. Objection. That doesn't sound normal. Nay, tis quite ordinary, sire. After all, thoughts would recall our fiery debate. Amidst such argument, there'd be no time for fiery tea. Romeo and Juliet again, and who is stronger? Mr. Shamspear, in summary, allow me to confirm. Did you not come here with the intention of naming your attacker? But of course, my liege. T'was the stooped lover of words did attempt to shuffle me off this mortal coil. <sighs> we all know what that means. T'was the tea alone did pass my lips that late hour, not else. Hold it! So, you didn't have any kind of evening meal? Dinner. Supper. Ha! Fee on luxury. Sorry. Fie on luxury. Fie on gluttony. To east thrite daily is but a waste of time. Sorry. I would that my belly were full. No more oft than the sun doth rise. Well, most heroic eating habits, I must say. Night and day do I fill my hours with learned study of the great bard and playwright. Hence is that there doth not in my chamber be than the costumes of mine art. That would appear to be the case, as even a rodent was found starved to death in your room. Now I think of it, it's not just food that was conspicuously missing from the room, is it? I don't recall seeing a single play or script anywhere. For I have devoured them all. You... eaten them? Every word be within my skull. Didst thou imagine otherwise? Right. That wasn't misleading at all. Now, could you turn around, do you think? Which brings us to the conclusion that the only way the poison could have passed the victim's lips is in the tea. <sighs> I was outside this bloke's window in the freezing cold all night keeping an eye on his room. Hold it! But the windows of that house have all been filled in. A historical artifact of the now defunct window tax. Yeah, you're right there. All bricked up horribly. But as it happens, there was a little part of the brickwork at the bottom corner that's been opened up. I was looking in through that gap. Yes, there were a few bricks loose, weren't there? And for some strange reason, a couple of bars of soap lined up on the ledge outside as well. I don't like going around poking my chin in other people's business, especially on freezing cold nights. But them's my orders, so that's what I'll keep doing, as long as there's breath in my body. Reminds you of Yuri from Vesperia? Man, I have not played Tales of Vesperia in a hot minute. Uh, as long as we don't see him doing some vigilante justice. Actually, we might, we might honestly see him doing some vigilante justice. He is on the underside of things. I don't know, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens with, uh, with Kuro, that's for sure. What's with all the theatricals today? Out of interest, Mr. Meter Man, after the accused had left and returned to his own lodgings, did you see the victim leave the room at all? No, he never left. He was in that room the whole time as far as I'm concerned. And we can therefore discount the possibility of suicide. How can you be sure of that? The police carried out a thorough investigation of the scene and found no receptacle for the poison. And since we know the victim didn't leave his room, and hence didn't dispose of the poison container himself, 
It's clear that this was no attempted suicide. Only the culprit could have removed the receptacle. Ah, yes. Lucidly explained, Council. Thank you. It really was. You can't argue with the logic. <laughs> no one else visited his room but that short little round-backed Eastern fella. Hold it! You say a short little round-backed Eastern fella. So you can't be sure it was the defendant then? Objection! How many other short little round-backed Nipponese with a mustache do you think there are in London? Well, of course it's only an Arab gap and it was quite dark so I didn't notice the mustache. But he showed up at around 9 so I'm pretty sure of myself. And when the person you saw arrived, did he and Mr. Shamspear drink tea together? Nah, sorry, I couldn't say. Why not? Because I couldn't see into the room all that well, could I? What I did see was the silhouette of that little round back fella wearing a pretty dress. Then the pair of them started some kind of wrestling match. I tell you, I didn't know what to make of it. <laughs> I suppose... That was the Romeo and Juliet championship battle getting underway. Mr. Meterman. Allow me to confirm one final time. Apart from the accused, can you state with certainty that no one else visited the victim on the night in question? No question. Gas man's honor. Hold it. Oh, wrong hold it. My lord! G goodness me! Yes, Mr. Foreman. I've kept my mouth shut and listened up till now, but this has gone on long enough. Are you all with me? Yes! Are we to understand that you ladies and gentlemen of the jury are in agreement with one another? That you've reached a unanimous decision? To right we have. Are you all with me? Yes! Wait, no! The defense is in the middle of a cross-examination! To be honest, I was holding out a bit of hope for you, young man. Especially after you identified those few hours that followed the accused leaving the victim's room. Yes, the three missing hours, as you put it. But in the end, what difference do they make? None, as far as I can see. And since that's now apparent, there's really no reason to delay our decision any longer. Like I was saying before, if I don't take Five Bomb home with me tonight, the missus will blow her top. What's that? Sorry, I didn't quite catch what you said. Very well. Let the court be apprised of your decisions. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will state your leanings as to the defendant's culpability. Guilty! Guilty. Guilty. Well, we're doing Guilty. well. Guilty. Guilty. It would be nice to see the Edgeworth games actually get an official release. I mean, the first one did, but the second one didn't. And the second one's the really good one. Uh, all of you? Well, it would appear that the jury is indeed unanimous. So, this time at least it seems justice will be done. All's well that ends well, as they say. This calls for a toast, I feel. To the guilty being punished. Ah. Get up, Mr. Naruhoto, please. The trial isn't over yet. What, what do you mean, Miss Suzato? What about the information I found in this encyclopedia of British law I have? That obscure right that belongs to the defense in these situations. Remember? The reason they're bringing this up is because uh, this is the first time we would have done it in this game, but we've done it plenty of times in the first game. A, a summation examination. Yes, that's right. We don't have a jury in Japanese courts, of course, but here in a British court of law, if we can reverse the decision of a majority of the jurors, we can force the trial to continue. Edgeworth is a great prosecutor. I love him a lot, too. This trial can't end now. Ooh, excuse me. 
Whatever it takes, I just can't let that happen. The defense moves to invoke its right to a summation examination, my lord. Why am I not surprised at my learned Nipponese friend's inability to admit defeat? You choose to cling desperately to some archaic rule you barely comprehend, instead of accepting the truth. Certainly no other defense counselor in recent times has exercised the right to a summation examination. Because they all know that once the jury's mind is set, it cannot be altered. Nevertheless, the right remains and must be upheld. The defense counsel's request is granted. The court will proceed with the summation examination, as outlined in the Encyclopedia of British Law. Thank you, my lord. Are you and your fellows prepared, Mr. Foreman? Believe me, my lord, we know all about this young lad's tenacity. And we're ready for it. Very well. In that case, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I hereby call upon each of you to state the grounds on which you find the defendant guilty of the crime for which he stands accused. Alright, let's break these guys down. The victim may not be well off, but he's a noble man and straight up. There's no reason to doubt the man. Well, I do declare the good gentleman has no reason to lie. In fact, I think he's rather splendid. Just look at the accused by comparison. He's Japanese, stoops all the while, and has a mustache. Very fishy. There's no evidence to suggest the gangling actor is a fraudsman. For now, at least. Ugh, I really don't care. Like, I just need this trial to end quickly. Three hours of missing time is nothing when you reach my age, you know. Nothing at all. <laughs> I knew it. Every single one of them seems completely convinced. It would seem that all the jurors have come to the conclusion that Mr. Shamspear is a fine, upstanding, and honest citizen. If you ask me, they've all been bewitched by his strange theatrical movements. And sadly, nothing Mr. Natsume has said appears to have registered at all. Well, here goes. Let's not forget. I pleaded with the jury on Soseki-san's behalf before, and it worked, so you never know. Before we begin, it might be an idea for me to remind you exactly how a summation examination works, Mr. Naruhodo. Fuck. One second. 